Hey everyone, hopefully you're having a good day. My name is Andy, my channel is Finding Value. If you guys are looking for some undervalued investment opportunities, click subscribe. Give me a thumbs up button, don't forget to do that. I was looking through the comments, someone said, hey, what about your opinion on the home buyer sentiment um, sticking to, to a low? And I said, sure. So I, I looked at some, some articles. Uh, this article, obviously, I would say, jives very well with what I think and believe. And I'll just touch some really key points here. So the article at the top says, home buyer sentiment sinks to a 10 year low amid tight supply. If we go down here, it says April's HPSI reading appears to have been acutely impacted by the ongoing lack of housing supply despite improving economic conditions. And it goes through respondents who say, it's a good time to buy and it's declining quite rapidly. Says real estate veteran Barbara Corcoran uh, recently told Yahoo Finance that home buyers are panicked, depressed for good reason. If you go down, we have seen bidding wars at every price point, and I, and that's going to discourage people because if you can't get a house, so what, what's going on and what I see, and I've already I know people who have stopped looking altogether. There are so many buyers uh, it, for the market that there's not nearly enough homes. So obviously if you're trying to bid, and let's say you bid on four or five homes and you get none of them, I mean, you just get absolutely slaughtered. You bid, let's say your price point is 350, <clears throat> you bid 350 and the house goes for 420 and you're like, I have no chance. Uh, so what people are doing is they're literally getting priced out of the market. And it's a lot of people, not, not, a, not a few, there's a lot being priced out because the supply demand in, in real estate is the purest form. There's no manipulation. There's no moving interest rates up and down, uh, pricing assets. There's there's none of that stuff. So it's, it's literally supply demand. And these people are getting bid out. A lot of people, not just, we're talking 20 people per house getting bid out. Outbid, bid out, whatever. Uh, another thing that they're talking about here. Uh, it says U.S. home price growth accelerates. Obviously, you can see that in the chart. Uh, it's it's going up at a pretty steep pace. Coming on down, dem uh, demand and supply factors remain a tailwind for home prices. And if you're on the channel, you know this. Um, we are in an expansion phase of real estate. We've got the tailwinds behind us. Demand far outstrips supply. And it says to drive household formation at a rate 30 to 50% above the long run rate of new household formation. That's what's coming from the millennials. They are a larger cohort of, of people. And it's driving demand that's greater than supply by a long shot. Plus we underbuilt from the last crash. You add this all up together, and it's going to manifest itself in people getting priced out of the market, which is going to affect home buyer sentiment. And that's why you see the, the big split. Now, is it going to follow the home buyer sentiment, the, the home builders coming down and then a crash? I don't know. I would think not, but you've got a lot of factors that are going on right now that haven't happened before, COVID mainly. And then you've got this huge shortage in lumber or I should say the price of lumber went way up, which is signaling a shortage, which then is going to depress people buying new homes. So you're, you're, you're kind of messed up any way you look at it. You go to buy an existing home and everyone's already trying to buy it. You go to buy a new home and your costs are flying higher. And they're going, you know, WTF, why the face? Why the face? Um, so here's another one. Even before the COVID-19 pandemic, demographic tailwinds and historically low mortgage rates had pushed demand to high levels, Goldman Sachs says. A shift in preference during the pandemic caused de demand to spike, and consumer surveys indicate that household buying intentions are now the highest in 20 years. It says, but the sticker shock is putting a damper on home buying. The decrease in home buying sentiment likely indicates that some consumers potentially flush with savings, perhaps boosted in part by stimulus payments, may be attempting but failing to buy a home due to heightened competition for relatively few listing homes. I, and that's exactly what I think, to the T. The total number of homes for sale in the US fell to historic low of 1.07 million units in March, historic low. 
Unsold inventory sits at 2.1 months supply at the current sales pace, marginally up from February's two, two month supply and down from the 3.3 month supply record uh, recorded in March, 2020. There's the housing inventory shortage. Uh, it's showing that this thing is just moving on down and that we have very tight inventory, very tight, the tightest it's ever been. The supply picture offers no quick fixes to the shortage of available homes. Home builders are again facing headwinds that were already present before the pandemic, especially a lack of available plots to build on and a lack of construction workers. These constraints are likely to limit the pace of annual home building to around 1.5 million in coming years. <laughs> this is gonna take a long time uh, to get through because 1.5 million, let's say the average yearly demand is about let's just say 1.3 let's say they're 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 doing a 200,000 per year uh clip well it'd be 200,000 per month uh so 200,000 2 mil i mean it's going to take a couple years uh to basically build this thing back up so it's it's well i know it's two, it'd be at 1.3 200,000 per year cuz that says annual so 200,000 uh, let's say it's, let's say the shortage is four, man, that's going to take like 20 years. <laughs> this is, I, I don't know what's going to happen here, guys. I, with a 3.8 to 4 million home shortfall, and you're only making up ground of 200,000 per year, I, prices are going to remain high for a very long time. If that's all they can muster up, you know, muster up. Meanwhile, demand for homes doesn't seem to be waning. A leading indicator of future sales, pending home sales, ticked up in March and after two months uh, slowdown. That means home sellers are probably feeling pretty good about the spring. Consumer positivity regarding home selling conditions nearly matched its all-time high, demonstrating a large divergence in perceived conditions between sellers and buyers as measured by the gap between the two components. As has become standard discourse, uh, in the housing industry recently, increasing the supply of homes for sale would certainly help bring balance to this strong seller's market. But unfortunately, the most recent data doesn't suggest that inventory is likely to improve in the near future. So that's that's what we're up against. And I, I, I don't see home prices falling unless you get this. You could see a, a dip. If forbearance ends, you could see a dip if people were, were wanting to sell a re residential real estate if they're... I don't know, renting it out, and now they can just say, kick the buyers out and sell it. I'm not exactly sure. But remember, you you can be in forbearance and sell the house at any time. So if you run into some sort of problem, just sell the house and get a bunch of equity out of it. I don't think you're going to see foreclosures. I think you're going to see like hardly any. Because if you have equity in the house and it, you've got a lot of positive equity, just sell the home. Sell it to these this hungry market that wants to buy everything. That's, that's my take on it. And I, I think this is going to last for, I mean, if, if, if we can't make up the homes, if we can't build a whole bunch, it, it could be 10 or 20 years. It all depends on how fast they can, they can build. If they can find lots, build a home and get that more up towards the 2 million a year. If it's 2 million, they're making up 500,000, uh, 500,000, it'd be eight years. And that's about 2028, 20, 2029, 20, 2030 is kind of what I've been saying. Uh, but if they can't get to 2 million, then I, it's going to take longer and prices are going to go far higher. Well, that's my take on it. If you guys have, you know, what's your take? Put it in the comment section. Uh, I, I'm not trying to be a bull. I just look at the data and say, this is going to go higher. I, I, I can't see, I don't see this huge crash coming because I don't see where the inventory is going to come from. That's where I struggle. So everyone who's calling for a crash, where's the inventory going to come from? They're going to reference forbearance moratoria, but I don't think they're all going to come on at the same time. And if they do, you'll see a slight kind of, if this is an event, it's not a, a structural you know, increase in supply of homes. It's going to be like a dip and then it's going to go away. Uh, but that's the way I view it. So if you guys view it the same way or if you view it differently, put it in the comment section. Love to hear your opinions. And thanks for listening. This is Finding Value.